why am I shooting this from a weird angle? It's not some artistic choice. I literally just could not be bothered putting a shoebox on my desk to put my mini tripod on. I've just freaking angled it up because I'm a lazy. That's the kind of quality you get here at Children of Film. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jacob from the Children of Film podcast, and today I've got a, another movie review for you. Uh, once again, I want to thank Palace Nova Cinemas uh, for hooking me up with tickets to see this. I've been really looking forward to it for a while, and the movie I'm reviewing today is A Fantastic Woman. A Fantastic Woman is a Chilean movie. It was their submission to the Oscars for Best Foreign Feature, and it was nominated as one of the five nominees for Best Foreign Film. Could it win? I don't know. We'll see. It's certainly got a strong chance. And uh, it's directed by Sebastian Lelio. Lelio? Sebastian Lelio? Sorry, man. And it's about Marina, this trans woman who, she's like a singer, she's a waitress, and we meet her as she's sort of on a date with her uh, boyfriend named Orlando. Yeah, the movie kind of opens with them on a date and stuff like that. And uh, But, you know, later on in the night, uh, Orlando has an aneurysm and he dies. Also, just a quick detour, just a fun fact. The dude who plays him kind of looks like Jeremy Irons and I kept sort of having a chuckle to myself in the theatre and I'm like, yeah, it's like softer looking Jeremy Irons. But yeah, he has an aneurysm and dies and, uh, you know, she's kind of stuck there dealing with it, has to take him to the hospital and stuff. And really the core of this story is um, she's she wants to grieve. She wants to go and help out with the funerals and the wake and stuff, but his family uh, are not accept uh, uh, are not accepting of her and don't really understand her and won't let her partake and gets to the point where they're like abusing her and attacking her and stuff just for trying to mourn the loss of her loved one. And it's a pretty um, heartbreaking story in that regard. Um, so yeah, let, let's talk about it. Uh, there's a lot I liked and there's also some stuff that I didn't like about this movie. Um, on a visual level, this movie is amazing. Like the cinematography, it's really, really freaking well shot. Lots of sort of side on views of Marina and stuff like that. And, uh, it's the, the colors, it uses a lot of orange and a lot of white backgrounds that really makes the character stand out, which was really cool to see. And the music's great too. Lots of great music. And, Probably the standout of this movie is Daniela Vega's performance as Marina. Uh, she is absolutely fearless in this, absolutely incredible. It's a pretty brave performance, and uh, it's just great to see um, actual trans people playing trans characters. Um, and, you know, it's ho hopefully it re leads to this group getting more work uh, in Hollywood because it's there's not a lot of roles out there for them, and when half the ones that do are played by, you know, straight men or whatever, it's like, um, you know, it's kind of disheartening, but, uh, you know, it, it's great to see that. But Daniela Vega was fantastic. As a movie, though, I don't think it's perfect. I think I do have some issues with it. Um, in terms of, it's very, very plotting and slow, which that didn't necessarily bother me. What bothered me was that it never really earns the title of Fantastic Woman. Like, it is very, very understated, almost to its detriment. Like, it's, it's, it tries so hard to be grounded and realistic that it almost comes off as force. Like, there's a lot of sort of red herrings and stuff like that where, you know, it, it's building towards such a big payoff and, you, so, and you're sitting there thinking, well, you know, that's not going to pay off. And then it doesn't. Like, it, it's, it, it's almost a little too grounded in reality, but there are a couple of uh, great dream sequences and stuff like that. But, yeah, it never really... I feel like Daniela Vega's performance is more ferocious than the movie itself is willing to be. And I also thought that it kind of fell into misery porn at times because, you know, we've noticed with a lot of LGBTQ stories, they focus so much on the hardships and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that because it's an important story that needs to be told. But there comes a point in this movie where it's just such a torrent of horrible and embarrassing things happening and being done to Marina that you're just like, all right, I get it. People don't treat trans people very well and it's an important issue but the movie doesn't have enough joyful moments it feels like it's like the movie feels like it has to put marina through hell just to allow her to have some joy and redemption and it it, it is a, it is a little yeah it, it is a little much like i think it it leans too much on the hey look how badly she's being treated rather than having her be a fully fleshed out character of her own because uh, I think the performance really, really lends itself to a better movie than this. And it's kind of like a 
feel good movie for the audience. Not as in like you feel good about what's happening and you enjoy watching it, but it's a movie that's made to make you feel good about yourself in that, Hey guys, look at all this horrible stuff. Thanks for watching this movie. Thanks for not being transphobic legends. And, uh, I don't know, just it, some of that stuff kind of bothered me a little bit. Uh, but overall I did really like a fantastic woman. Uh, it was very, very well performed, well put together. And yeah, I'd be keen to see more from the director, Sebastian Lelio. And, uh, yeah, I do recommend checking this out if you're into, you know, foreign movies and, uh, you know, if it's a, if you think it's a story that you'd be interested in because there's a lot of important stuff there and stuff that I think needs to be seen. I just think at times it was probably a little much and I, I feel like it could have used a bit more joy. It could have, you know, earned the title of Fantastic Woman because instead it was um, just content to sort of wallow in misery a lot of the time and I just... It didn't fully do it for me in that regard, but there's some incredibly beautiful imagery and amazing performance. And at its core, the story is actually a really, really compelling and, uh, you know, heartbreaking one. So yeah, that's Fantastic Woman. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, I do recommend checking it out. Uh, it's in theaters. Started playing last week. It's up for the Oscars. Uh, you know, I'd have no complaints about it winning, but I'm going to be seeing The Square next week, so I'm pretty keen for that one as well. But, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, Jaron and I's awards are still coming. We're still working on that. And uh, I am very tired. Have a great day.